Okay, go ahead you guys. Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Iron Man figure review on Sentinel's re-edit Bleeding Edge Armor Iron Man. If you're trying to pick up one of these, you can get them now. Big, 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 big. get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. Thank you so much, Pedro, for making this review possible and sending this figure my way, along with the Extremist Armor Iron Man and the Iron Patriot. I'll be reviewing both of those as well. Such a general generous gesture man very much appreciated and anybody enjoying this video at all you have him to thank thank you so much man uh, you can see that this is held by velcro right over here you can open this up and you can see the bleeding edge armor iron man and I believe this is kind of close to like a Marvel Select scale figure, but super articulated. You get a bunch of interchangeable hands over there. These things are incredible. I've seen reviews of them. They are not cheap. And you can see this is number one right there. And then you can see the image right over there. And it has the re-edit or reply edit. Uh, I can't tell. And then it says re-edit or reply edit. And then not much at the bottom. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's the Bleeding Edge Iron Man figure out of the packaging. Sentinel just killed it with this figure. I have to say, this is the best Bleeding Edge Iron Man figure to date. This is just stunning. Very eloquent paint apps right here with this metallic red, and you get this gorgeous gold going throughout. You get these soft baby blue discs right over here. You get the LED light-up function, which is just fantastic. I really like the articulation. There's all these intricate working parts over here, and it's not a delicate figure. It's a very strong figure. However, it is very light. I would say as light as a Bandai modeling kit. I would prefer die cast, but anyway, later on, I think they did add die cast to their figures. This guy does come with a lot of accessories as well. I will mention my complaints. I won't say this is a perfect figure, but anyway, let's get to the accessories, and then we'll take a closer look at this Bleeding Edge Iron Man. We get five different pairs of interchangeable hands over here. We get two repulsor effects, which look very nice, along with these little pieces right here that you plug them into around the wrist. Then you also get this base, and then the figure does come with an instruction booklet, which I really like. Nice artwork right over there on the very back. Right over here, it says, no pulling! No pulling! And then right over there you can see how you interchange the batteries and you could have the different display options for the base. Now this isn't too bad of a base, but I have to say I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, there's parts of it that I just really don't like, but I do think the sculpt of it's pretty cool. So I think this is pretty neat how it looks like an arc reactor. And it does have these clear pieces underneath right over here that allow it to tab to other ones. So you can just plug it like that. And then you can see it'll support another one right over there. So I think that's pretty neat. It does have this little clear piece right over here, which I did not see in the instruction booklet at all anywhere. And I don't know where to put this. So I figure maybe putting it at the bottom right here in the center. Then this piece coming apart on me very easily is frustrating. I don't really like that. I wish it could stay a bit more securely. The cool thing about that, though, is that you can rotate it over here. So you basically get your two options. You can see the first option I'm showing off here is the flight stand mode. So you can just plug this into any of these three three ports, it doesn't have to be that one. And then you get this metal rod and you get this clear clip right over here. And you can shift this up and down on this thing. Oh, come on, it's not gonna move right now. There it goes, so you can see you could slide it. Yeah, there you go, you slide it downward too. So that's pretty neat. And it will move up and down right here. I just took that off by accident. And you can rotate this clear piece and you could also rotate it right over here. And then you get this clamp right here that does have a little spring inside of it. Now the thing I really like about this is that this clamp piece over here has this nice gel material in the inside of it so you do not damage that beautiful paint job. This thing does not hold up as well as I would like it to. Right now it feels pretty sturdy and the figure is pretty light but there's some times where it just kind of, I don't know, it'll droop down on me more than I want it to and having this complex assembly does get in the way of taking pictures. So not a terrible stand but yeah, it's not my favorite. And then for the second display option you just pop this off right over here and then you can plant this little glass shield down and it just tabs into just this one part right there. And it looks pretty cool, you know, I like it. 
It's got his own little docking bay and everything, which is kind of neat. You can take some of these pieces off though, so if you want only two, you could do that. Or you could remove this little plastic piece, or you can make it so it's just one. I don't see why you'd really want to do that, it just kind of makes it a little bit more flimsy for me taking those little parts off. So I'd prefer that this was a little bit more of just one solid piece, but it still works. I don't know if I'll have the figure displayed on this or not, we'll see. Now taking a closer look at some of these interchangeable hands, you can see they're just painted out very nicely. The metallic red and the gold just look superb, and I love this cream colored baby blue that they use for the repulsors on all of them you know it's even on the fisted hands right here too you can see it right underneath there then swapping these out is very easy you just plug it right in there and it stays very nicely I think that's very cool now you also get this repulsor effect which is a bit frustrating for me because it only works if it's shooting from the top of his hand and I think that's a little bit weird I don't see why they didn't make it so that he could shoot from underneath but you can see right there how that port sticks from above the hand I tried doing it the other way around where it shoots from underneath and it, it just doesn't really want to stay it's just really weird it doesn't really work so well now that I have that positioned properly once again here's looking at one of the repulsor effects now I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a repulsor blast or a repulsor blade I did see an image of the bleeding edge Iron Man with a repulsor blade right there so I don't know because it's shooting from the top of the hand I think that's what it's for but you just plug it in like that, and it does look really cool. I love how it fades into the clear color right there. I think that's really neat. This is very, very sharp. I did poke myself once trying to push it in here. You want to push it in by holding the blade like that. Don't be a dummy like me. And then just to show off me trying to get that repulsor blast to work, you know, it, I guess you can make it work. It's always going to tilt downward, and it does look weird. So this is actually my biggest complaint with the figure, is that you can't really set this up so that he's shooting a good repulsor blast. It's Iron Man, come on! I feel like I've already said it a million times, but... The the paint is just phenomenal on this. I just really love this paint. And I love that they actually painted some black right there in some of those seams. That looks really good too. Looking on the side right over here. Just looks fantastic. I'm just very pleased with this. And I like how this little piece right here isn't just a matte color. Because this thing shifts over right over there. And I think that's really neat. And then you get this little clear piece showing. I think that's due to the LED light. Which is working a little shaky on me just now. Um, uh, you know, I was just demonstrating this a second ago on a first take. And the light up feature right here is underneath this little spine piece. And you just turn the switch on. And it's getting a little fritzy on me. And I think it may have been a pose. May have done some damage to it. I'm not sure. But yeah, you can see the eyes aren't really working right there. The switch is up. And the light's just not turning on. There it goes. So you can see the light's on right there. It looks very cool. And the light on right over there. But yeah, you can see it's getting a little bit weird. So I may have damaged the figure. And I'm pretty bummed out about that. I did follow the directions. And I didn't really pull on anything. Or to my knowledge, I didn't pull on anything I wasn't supposed to. So yeah. But anyway, looking at the engineering right over here in this armpit joint. I really like this a lot. You get all these little shifting pieces in here. And you can just see all those little parts that move around. This little guy did fall off of me, but I just put it right back on there very easily. So that wasn't too bad. It almost looks like we get different colors of gold in some parts of this thing. It's just really, really neat looking. I love these little creamish blue colored pieces that we see throughout. So the sculpt on this is just phenomenal. It just goes along with the paint apps just very nicely. This is just really cool. I just can't stop looking at it. It's just a beautiful Iron Man figure. Another minor gripe of mine, though, is that he does have a big ass. Look at that. That is a big butt Iron Man right there. It's like, whoa, diaper butt. But I think they had it sculpted this way so that you can get a lot of hip movement around here. As you can see, there's this gap right there in the crotch. So, I don't know. Maybe if we had the legs being able to shift up and down or something like that on that, like on that uh, True Force Mega Man, that may have helped a little bit more with that. But you get these hinged pieces right over here. And looking at the knees. I'm not a big fan of like that ribbed knee joint thing going on. And then looking right over here, this looks really good. And you get Iron Man toes, yeah. A little big Iron Man toe right there. And then even on the bottom, some very nice details as well. And looking on the back of this figure again, I just want to show that when you bend the knees right here, I like how this calf section folds in right there. I think that is really neat. And looking up the rest of the legs over here, yeah, you can see he's got a big butt. And then you can see the little part right there where you can switch out the batteries. He can look up very far. That is a great amount of head movement over there. You can get his neck to move and the head can move down a lot like that. You can get his head to move side to side, so that's pretty sweet. And then you can get some head pivot in there as well, so that's looking really nice. Then you get these shoulder flaps that you can flip them up over here, and you can tilt them up over here, and you can rotate these forward and back too. So there's a lot of movement right over there. 
This allows the shoulders to move outward very far. Again, you get this nice armpit joint right there, and you can see the pieces moving in the front and in the inside, so that is just very, very impressive to me. You move the arms down pretty far, you can rotate them forward, you get a bicep swivel. You do get double jointed elbows, and then the wrist moves side to side and they hinge up and down. They're on a ball peg system. I do wish that this little wrist piece right here could rotate. Getting him in repulsor blast poses is a little tricky because you have to rotate at the bicep to get this facing upwards. So having this little piece right here be able to rotate, I think that would have been nice. Anyway, you do get a diaphragm joint. You can rotate it side to side. You do get diaphragm pivot. It does crunch forward pretty far and it does crunch back very far. You get a waist swivel over here, turn side to side, get waist pivot and waist crunching. You also get these flaps right here that I already mentioned, they move upward and you can do the splits, and I really like these inner working parts right here on the inside of the thigh. That is really cool. Damn, and you can get them to kick pretty far too. So uh, almost 90 degrees right there with that kick, and it can not move back. You do get a swivel, so it can turn in and out right there at the upper hip, and then you get double jointed knees, and then you do get the ankles that move down only a little bit. You can move them up pretty far. He has this really interesting ankle pivot where it actually pivots right over here, instead of down here. So, you know, it's a little different, but it works really well. And you can see it bend in all the way. So I really like that a lot. And he has this really good toe articulation. One thing that's really unique about this is that you can see you get a little extra flat piece right there, which I really like a lot because it really helps supporting the figure. Now this is not a 1 12th scale figure. As you can see, Iron Man is standing just at about seven and a half inches tall. Then here's the Sentinel Bleeding Edge Iron Man next to the Marvel Legends Bleeding Edge. And then we have the Marvel Select one. So you can see that the Marvel Select and the Sentinel one stand at about the same height. And this guy could easily replace place your Marvel Select version, which ooh, hoo, hoo. Then to drive the point home even further about this guy fitting in with Marvel Selects, here he is next to the classic Captain America, and then we have the new Thor, and then the Hulk over there. And you can see he fits in pretty well with the Thor figure. I feel like he's a little bit shorter than the classic Cap. Then once again, this figure does not fit in with Marvel Legends, seeing it compared to the Marvel Legends big time letdown Spider-Man. Hey, so I think I saw this armor in a movie trailer recently, huh? Hey, good for you! Then here's Iron Man in the landing pose. Fairly easy to get him in this pose. One thing about this figure I will have to mention is that the paint apps are very strong with this. When I said durability, I meant the paint apps more than anything else, especially having these different colors of gold in it and everything and the red. I mean, I haven't had any scuffs and the times I have thought I gotten scuffs, it's just part of the sculpting work. So I think the paint is just phenomenal on this. The LED lights are off and on with me. I think I may have stretched a wire or something like that, but it's working just fine right now. Now. So I don't know what the deal with that is, but for the most part, this thing is absolutely amazing. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the review. If you did, please hit the like button. Click any of these boxes right over here if you want more shark in your face. If you're over the age of 18 or older, please check out the Patreon account. And if you're any age, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And go to MarvelousNews.com for the latest in Marvel-related news. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Posing action figures, posing action figures, posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures. So That's crispy. That's so that you can get a